Welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In today's video, we're going to be doing hypothesis tests about a mean uh, where sigma is known. All right, this is not to be confused for small sample sizes where sigma is unknown, and you're doing a mean hypothesis test. In this case, our sigma is going to be known. A car dealer says that the mean price of a 2018 Honda CRV is less than 26,500. You suspect this claim is incorrect and find that a random sample of 49 vehicles has a mean price of $2,500. Uh, $25,000. If the population standard deviation is $7,000, is there enough evidence to reject the dealer's claim at alpha equals 0 0.10? Assume the population is normally distributed. <coughs> now, in this form of hypothesis test and we know that sigma is known and here we see the standard deviation value. The standard deviation is $7,000 and this is a population standard deviation which is identified with right here. This makes us comfortable knowing that we just have to use a z-score chart because this is normally distributed and the number of samples are also 49 which with a paired with a population standard deviation means we're using z-scores to identify our critical regions. And that's a safe bet because we're not using t-scores and it's a bit easier. Besides this, we know the car's mean price is $25,000 for the sampled vehicles. Besides this, we know that there's also a claim in here, right? And it says here you suspect this claim is incorrect. And the claim they're talking about for that sentence, for this component of the sentence, is what the car dealer is saying. And so the car dealer is saying that the CRV is less than $26,500. So we're going to test this claim. And this claim is going to be tested at the significance level of 0.10, which is 10%. Now to begin this, what we have to do is take our claim, identify with it, and see what the claim is saying so that we can make a sentence out of it. And so our claim here is, the dealer is saying that the CRV is less than $26,500. So we're going to identify that claim right away and notarize it. Say the claim, it says the mean average price is less than, because it says less than, $26,500. So we're going to run this test. Now that we have our claim, we're going to use our hypothesis table to determine our null and our alternative hypothesis and what kind of test type we have. This is step one, this is step two, three, and step four all combined in one step, all right? So being that we have our mean being a less than symbol for 26,500, we take a look at our alternative which has the symbol we see. We're going to match these two, um, these two symbols to our null and alternative hypothesis with the same two components of the mean and the $26,500. So our, our second step here, our null hypothesis, identifying it, we know the mean is now going to be the counter argument of less than, which is greater or equal to, which we can see on the chart circled there, and we take the same amount here, $26,500. Our alternative hypothesis tells us, which is also H1 in many classes, it's either H of the, no, the alternate hypothesis or hypothesis 1, which is the alternate to 0, in which we have the actual claim, the same way we see it. And for the purpose of the conclusion of this, we're just going to put in parentheses here, this is our claim. And besides this, we're going to say what kind of test it is. This is a left tail test. So, so far we have four out of the seven steps that are required to complete any hypothesis test. Besides this, what I'm going to do here now next is I'm going to draw the region so that we know what the rejection region is and where it is because it's a left tail test. Besides this, we're going to combine that with the area of the significance level of the rejection region. So this should be pretty handy in what you're doing. And here we have our little symbol for the normal distribution. Let's fix this, it doesn't look too uniform. This is an art, so we're just going to stop there. And we know it's a left tail test, so the rejection region in this case is going to be over here somewhere, where if you land in this component, you're going to reject the no hypothesis. And the marker for that is based on the area, and the area of this region we know is 0 0.1000. And this region represents this. And now, if we fall in this region, 
we're going to fail to reject the null hypothesis. And so any z value that falls above this critical region will give us that. Now to calculate your rejection region, what you have to do is look on your z-score chart and you're going to try to find the area that corresponds to this area, which is uh, 0 0.1000. And the 0 0.1000 is going to correspond to the, the z-critical value. And that z-critical value, we'll just call z-crit for z-critical, is going to be negative 1.28. So now, if your z-test statistic is less than negative 1.28, you're going to reject the null hypothesis. If the z-test is greater than negative 1.28, right? And actually, we're going to say greater or equal to, right? Because of these conditions, we're going to say fail to reject. The null hypothesis. And so these are our conditionals for what we're actually doing in this hypothesis test, which will make it a lot easier for us once we get to our test statistic, right? And now let's calculate our test statistic, right? Because we have our z-critical. We know what the critical means and what, it, what the consequences of the, cri the criticals are. All we have to do is find our test statistic. And to do that, we use the test statistic formula, which takes the sample mean, subtracts the mean of the population and divides by the standard deviation over the square root of n. And what do we know about this then? Let's take a note of everything we do know. We know the mean of the sampling distribution is 26,500. The mean of the samples, or the sample mean, is 2,500. Uh, 25,000, not 2,500. The standard deviation of the population, sigma, is 7,000, and our n is 49, and that's all we need to solve this. So our goal then is to plug in all these values, get our, t, our z test statistic, and compare that test statistic to our critical statistic, and make the comparison for failure or rejection, or failure to reject, or the rejection of the null hypothesis, right? Let's plug in and solve. So here we have for the sample mean is 25,000 minus 26,500 over 7,000 over the square root of 49. Now as far as the top goes, we could just subtract these, calculate them, right? 25,000 minus 26,500 is negative 1,500. On the bottom here, 7,000 divided by the square root of 49. We know the square root of 49 to be 7, so what you're doing here is 7,000 divided by 7, and that gives us 1,000, right? So here we get 1,000, and when we divide these two, which you be, should be doing this with a calculator, gives you negative 1.5. And we're just going to add a zero here for the sake of the z-score, because we need a z-score to compare to this z-score. And if we look on this line, where does negative 1.50 land? Is it before? or after the negative 1.28? It's going to be before, because it's less than negative 1.28. So our z-test statistic falls down here in the rejection region for the z-test stat. And for this reason, we're going to reject the null hypothesis. But let's just get the p-value to close it out and compare our p-value to the alpha, which is the significance level. And to get this p-value, what I'm going to do then is find the area that corresponds with the left tail of negative 1.50. And if you look on your z-score chart, right, and you're looking up negative 1.5 and double zero, and you mix those two values like you do with a multiplication chart, the area you're going to find is 0 0.0668, which is well below 0 0.10. And so our significance level is greater than our p-value, and for this reason, we must reject the null hypothesis and accept the alternate hypothesis, which means we're not rejecting the claim in this problem. We're accepting it, all right? Thank you.